December 6, 1941. As World War II rages throughout Europe, British Royal Navy submarine HMS Perseus is patrolling the waters off the coast of Greece. With both German and Italian forces occupying Greece and the threat of underwater mines lurking, it is a dangerous mission. HMS Perseus is a 260-foot submarine. Uh, she's on a mission sailing from Malta to Alexandria. HMS Perseus carried 58 crew and two passengers. One of those two passengers is a sailor by the name of John Capes. He had hitched a ride aboard the submarine so that he could return to his home base in Alexandria, where the Perseus was scheduled to dock after its mission was complete. During the night, the submarine comes up to charge its batteries so that it can operate underwater during the day. And they go along very slowly, keeping a very, very sharp lookout. At approximately 10 p.m., the crew of the Perseus was awakened by a violent explosion. And everyone on board scrambled for their lives. She hit a mine which made a big hole in the bows of the vessel so that it sank very, very fast towards the bottom. John Capes happened to be in the safest place on the boat, the place that was furthest away from the explosion. Capes is suddenly jolted awake. He kind of gets himself together, realizes what's happened, and he goes forward to see what he can find. With only moments to spare, Capes has to act fast. Fortunately, he finds a potential lifeline in the form of an emergency escape suit, which is designed to protect sailors against the effects of water pressure. Exiting the submarine at a depth of some 170 feet, Capes and one of the crew sailors desperately attempt to make their way to the surface. As if surviving both the explosion and death by drowning weren't enough, the tremendous weight of the water leaves them vulnerable to a potentially fatal condition dreaded by deep sea divers, known as the bends. The bends is similar to opening up a can of soda. When you open up a can of soda, the gas that's in the liquid, which is carbon dioxide, all of a sudden starts releasing, bubbling to the top of the can of soda. So the nitrogen that's in the body does the same thing. So when you ascend too fast, the nitrogen that's built up in the body tries to escape. And this can bubble out into any of the organs, including the heart, the brain, the lungs. It can cause malfunction. It can also kill you. Even though his escape suit was not rated to handle water pressure deeper than 100 feet, John Capes' will to survive was formidable. In spite of everything, including the beds, he made it to the surface alive. Capes made quite a swim. I think it was about six miles or so swimming. He reaches a, a rocky beach, manages to drag himself ashore, and collapses. It's amazing that John Cape's lungs did not explode, or at least hemorrhage badly, as he was surfacing. Maybe this guy was just lucky enough that he was resilient enough to survive. Against all odds, John Capes escaped what should have been a death sentence. He defied everything we know about both human physiology and the laws of physics. But how? So in the British Navy, for a long, long time, there had been an alcohol ration every day, and the rum was 95% proof. And in order to settle his nerves, John Capes took a big swig out of his rum bottle. So I guess by the time that John Capes was actually leaving the submarine, he was more than a little bit drunk. Actually, drinking alcohol might have helped him out. It could have lowered his blood pressure a little bit, and it could have actually kept him calm. Both of those are things that you may need in this type of situation. You need to remain calm in an emergency, and your blood pressure was going to get really high at some point. And so if you have a way to artificially bring it down some, I suspect that helped. 
Unfortunately, John Capes' story was so remarkable, so inexplicable, that many people didn't believe it was true. They even went so far as to question whether or not he had ever been on the submarine in the first place. People didn't believe that you could survive that, that escape from 170 feet. So there were all sorts of people cast doubts on John Capes. And it wasn't until nearly 50 years later when divers discovered the wreck of HMS Perseus that there was the hatch opened and John Capes' story was at last validated and his, his behavior and his courage was rewarded.